The following message that I minister now is possibly the most important message of my life, or at least the most important that I have spoken or taught. It, it is of such magnitude, at least to me, that I wanted to record it again. I had recorded this a couple of weeks ago. I'm doing it again because my heart and desire is that not only will people receive it, but they will pass it on to others. I've entitled this message, Saving People's Lives for Good. Some questions for you. Why do people reach the end of their rope and sometimes let go? Why do people throw in the towel from the very people they love the most? We are living in a generation, particularly here in Australia, where there is more counselling, more hospitals, more help, more social welfare, more assistance than ever in the time of history. And yet, symptomatic problems of worry, depression, anxiety, suicide, family breakups are not at an all-time low. They are not diminishing. They are increasing. Now, why is that? I believe I have something to teach now that I hope and pray will set the record straight and assist to save people's lives. I begin this by letting you know without talking about myself for self gain or in it, for any other reason other than you might know that my, compa my compassion and heart for people. From the age of 17, I received a touch of the Holy Spirit upon my life. I was already a Christian, and yet at that age, I believe the Holy Spirit came upon me in such a supernatural way that I wanted to help people. I had a greater love for people than I had ever had before. Every weekend, I would ride my push bike. If you know the Gold Coast, I would ride from Chevron Island, where we lived at that time, over to Narang and up to Palm Beach. That's quite a ride on a push bike, I can assure you. Uh, and, and I would visit people on the Saturday, I'd go to church on the Sunday, Sunday afternoon, I would catch up with more people. I couldn't help myself, something had happened to me. Uh, uh, people started noticing, I was, uh, uh, people were calling me over. I was getting involved in people's lives at the age of 17 that was way outside my depth. And yet, yet I discovered that people wanted to be loved. People wanted to be understood. People wanted to be listened to. And the Holy Spirit was giving me wisdom way beyond my years. I look back and go, oh my goodness. So I, why do I say this? Because I understand. I understand people and I love them. And so the message that I give you now is not coming from a heart of judgment. It's definitely not coming from a perspective of misunderstanding, but from a perspective of, well, understanding and love and compassion for folks. Why? In a generation like we have today, particularly here in Australia and in many other countries, where there is more help, more assistance, are people taking their own life. People throwing away relationships because they come to the end of the rope. The, the Bible says here in Psalm 23, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. There are times in our life that are like that, aren't they? You don't run, you walk. You're too tired to keep going. Tiredness is enormous throughout our society. People saying, I'm just tired, going to the doctor, getting sleep medication because they're tired, but they can't sleep. Worried, stressed out. Is it all to do with money? No. Money problems are not the problem, all right? Uh, a couple arguing. That, that is not what I'm addressing today. Right? Uh, something way deeper than all of that. Now, I do have a word in all of this that I believe is symptomatic. And one of the real reasons why people give up. Why they throw in the towel on so many. I, I, I have seen 
people that have more for them than against them and still give in the t- throw in the towel. I've had some dear, precious, and I think back, some precious friends of mine who have taken their own life. Trust me, to this very day, it affects me. Uh, I know the damage that is done from such a thing. And that's why I've entitled this Saving People's Lives for Good. It's important. It's really important, okay? I want you to receive this. And even if you throw it out, even if you disagree with me on this, don't just know that my heart is for folks, okay? But if you do receive it, if you do get it, if you agree and you think, wow, this is a message that needs to get out, then share it with others. Please share it with others. I want to talk to you about pride. Okay. I believe that is a symptomatic issue in people's lives. And you might go, ah, hang on. It's not pride. Don't start with the pride thing. Well, hang a bit. Stay with me through the course of this. All right. I'll make my case. I believe that pride is a big issue. I believe people's rights is another issue. Uh, that people believing they have the right in certain areas, like me driving in a car, uh, doing what I want to do, the policeman pulling me over and saying, hang a bit, do you realize you're exceeding the speed limit? And me saying to that officer, well, I have the right to do what I want, don't I? I think that officer would take a dim view of that. Uh, And yet it appears to me that we have a society of people, uh, and, and I mean this, cross section people that go to church people that don't go to church all i'm talking about all society here at high levels even have believe they have the right to do all sorts of things to take their life to throw a family in uh, not to push through not to you know the concept of pain and short term relief uh, from that pain seems to be the remedy for so many folks. Now, I get it. And I want to say this to you. When a person, can I be blunt with you? When a person is ready to throw in the towel, and they're really ready, okay, Um, whether it be to take their own life, to throw in a relationship, to walk away from their family, to leave their church, to disconnect, whatever it might be, at that moment in time, they don't care. Now you might say, well, that's not fair. No, they don't care because they've had enough. Because of this, they're walking through a valley and they feel alone. You can be in a crowd of people, folks, and you can be very, very alone, okay? Okay, trust me, I know. And I know because I've been there. I've been there. I know what it feels. I've lost everything in my life a couple of times over. I know what it is to walk through this. And you don't care anymore. Right? People say, but what about the ones you love? What about this? Well, they don't care anymore because they've had enough. Now, I'm talking pretty serious, aren't I? Dear me. The, uh, those who know me go, gee, this is unlike you. You're normally you know, a bit happier and bubblier and, and you like to motivate people. Well, I hope this motivates people to live and not die. I hope this motivates people to reconnect and no longer disconnect. That's what I'm hoping for. That's what I'm praying for. And that's the greatest motivation out of this I could possibly get. Pride. First of all, let me cover pride. Okay. I understand that some people will say pride is not the reason for everybody. I get that as well. But I believe also pride is a big reason, a major driver, a major reason for why so many people attempt to end their life their relationships, their future, and all sorts of circumstances. And don't worry, I will make my case. First of all, there are three kinds of pride. Number one, uh, there is dignity. Dignity pride, where you're proud of your child, you're proud of your wife, you're proud of your husband, you're proud of a a good day's work. There's nothing wrong with that. That's okay. Yeah, let's not be silly about pride. Uh, it's like anger. Sometimes uh, you're justified in being angry, right? But uh, it, it, but it's it's who's got who. Have you got the anger or has the anger got you? 
Right? It's like all these things, whether they be emotions or responses, whatever it might be, it's who's managing who. Uh, dignity is a good thing. Uh, looking after yourself is a good thing. You know, c- keeping, keeping that self awareness, that self esteem, that sense, but it can go too far. However, this type of pride, the first pride, it's all good. Number two, superiority, and number three, arrogance. Superiority and arrogance are just not only not helpful, but will end in self-defeat. Now you might say, "Well, hang a bit. I'm not. I know some people. Man, they're not. They're, they don't feel superior. Really? Is that right? Is that right? I'm not talking about." that image of a person that struts down the street with their chest out like their King Farouk, you know? I'm not talking about that. that and, and you know what? I know some of those people. And when you get one-on-one with them, you discover that's just all bravado with a lot of them. And then you meet them, and I've met them and discovered that some of those folks are the most humble people. They're some of them. They they put on an image, but the image is not really them. I'm talking about the core value belief of an individual, not the bravado, not the social front. I mean, who a person really is. And you might be surprised. This message may speak to you, because I'm wanting to save people's lives. That's what this is all about superiority and arrogance. See, the first is healthy. Uh, superiority, superiority and arrogance is blind pride. People sometimes don't even realize they have it. I want you to imagine a soldier. Uh, they're doing a tour overseas and they're tired today. They don't feel like it. They just had a letter from the family. They're unhappy. Uh, they, don't, they, don't, they don't want to move. They don't want to get out of bed. The call arrives, the call is sent out for all the soldiers, not only to get out of bed, put their boots on and go out and fight, defend. Can you imagine a soldier saying, oh, I've had enough. I don't feel like it. This, this isn't good for me. This doesn't make me happy. I don't appreciate this. Could you imagine a soldier doing that? You see, particularly, let me tell you, Christian, If you have enlisted in God's army, in other words, you've devoted your life to to Jesus Christ, then let me make it clear to you. You have given yourself to God. You've given yourself to him as a soldier would enlist into the armed forces. So you have enlisted into God's army. Yes, it's a family. Yes, it's the church. Yes, we have Jesus, the Holy Spirit. We have love and joy. But, let, but don't underestimate that as you see in Ephesians chapter 6, the armor of God is there for a reason. Because we are to be motivated by truth and righteousness and the gospel, the helmet of salvation and so on. Read it, Ephesians 6 verse 10 and following. Uh, this, is, this really is... An army. And the Bible says, you shall have no other gods before me. The God of self today is the prime mover behind so many decisions that are made by people. People believe they have the right. And that's a problem. Therein lies the issue. Because when you lay hold of your right, somebody else invariably loses theirs. People think they have the right to give up. Now, that's pride. Now, now I hope I'm getting the record straight. You see, it's a sense of superiority. It's, it's that arrogance. It's that pride. Now, we, we don't have, I don't have any more other English words to describe it. But I'm going to ask you to suspend your understanding of what arrogance is and superiority is and understand this could be a very humble person or seems very humble, lovely, delicate, all those beautiful things. And yet they'll make a choice that they simply don't have the right to do because he said, I want to be first. I want to be first. Now, a soldier 
could ask permission to take leave, but they must ask permission. A, a soldier may ask permission to miss a battle, but I doubt, I doubt that his commanding officer would let him. You see, we have a commanding officer. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we humble ourselves, the word of God says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pride is the great destroyer. It's the great destroyer. Hear me and understand me. He said, I will be first. Because if he is not first, then we become first. And if we become first, can't understand this, he loves us. He, he's, he's the one putting us first. He died for the cause. You know, when we put him first, trust me, he, he's already put us first. For God so loved the world that he gave, right? He's already given to us. Now he says, trust in me, submit to me, yield to me. You may think you're at the end of your rope, but when you get to the end of your rope, my arm is long enough. It is never short, is long enough to sustain you and to hold you. Humble yourself now under the mighty hand of God. A soldier came and uh, was, uh, uh, well, actually, before I get to the soldier, the devil came first and tested Jesus, didn't he? And Jesus said to him, man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, man shall not live by bread alone. Man shall not live by, let me take some preacher's license. Man shall not live by holidays alone. I'm not against holidays. Man shall not live by his job alone. I'm not against you having a job. Glad you do. I hope you do. Uh, man shall not live by affection alone. Man shall not live by praise alone. Man shall not live by whatever bread is to you. Whatever your bread is, whatever it is that sustains you. My question is, what if that is taken away? If that is taken away, what have you got left? Because if that bread, whatever that bread is to you, is taken away, what does that leave you? If it does not leave you with God as the center of it all, then you are left alone. And loneliness is a treacherous situation to be in because loneliness leads to all sorts of unusual thinking. Jesus made it clear to Satan, man shall not live by bread alone. The devil tried to trick him. The devil tried to get him. But Jesus understood. Mm -mm. I'm not going to go down that path. I will not go down. He's, see, the enemy tried to get Jesus to do what Jesus full well knew he could do. He could have taken on his rights immediately, but he humbled himself. You see, who, here's another question for you. What's sustaining you? What is it? What is actually sustaining you? Is it those, that list of affection or love from your family? They're all beautiful things. Nothing wrong with those. Uh, but what happens to that poor soul where their family rejects them? Mm -hmm. You ever been there? What happens to somebody when they lose all their finances, their money? What happens you know, when out here their dignity and their pride, their respect is all taken away? What have they got left? What is it that sustains you? Well... Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. He is with you. But you see, a person, a person that has themselves as the center where they have the right to do what they want to do. A soldier came to Jesus. Oh, what a powerful story. A soldier came to Jesus and said, I understand your authority, Jesus. I understand authority because I say to this man, go and he goes. I say to this man, comes and come and he comes. You are such a man. Jesus was stunned at such understanding. You see, if we are in the army of God, if we are going to profess Jesus Christ as Lord, then he should be Lord. And I don't have the right to throw in my family, to throw in my life, to throw in my future, to throw in these things. Now, I know these things happen. 
but I don't have the right to choose those things on my own. Because he is with me. Now I understand. Please don't go down the garden path of thinking I'm judging you. If you have gone through these situations and if you have made bad choices, then my, you know, give you a big hug. I understand. I get it. I've made, bad, I've made some pretty bad choices too. But I also understand and I've come to a place that I don't have the right except for Jesus to be the center. I will, he, we'll have no other gods before him. Now a lawyer came to Jesus and tried to trick him. Let's have a read of this. I'm not sure if you can read that. It's rather long on this screen here, but it's in Matthew 27 and verse 35 to 40. Then one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him and saying, Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law of the prophets. Jesus placed love. The Bible says God is love. You see? You see? Love. You read 1 Corinthians 13 about what love is and what love is not. Okay? Love is not selfish. That's a good one. Right? Selfishness. We, we are living in a generation of people that just believe they have the right to do what they want. I've heard this advice before. Just yes, do whatever makes you happy. No, that is the worst advice possible. Huh? Uh, he, he, he makes it clear here. God is love. Love is the antidote to selfishness. Love and putting God in the center. Understanding I'm submitted to him. When a person receives Christ, they submit themselves to the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, he submitted himself unto death. And then he requires that we submit ourselves unto life. Oh, get that one. Now he rose from the dead, praise God. He surrendered himself unto death. And he asks us and calls us, he commands us, to surrender ourselves unto life. He said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. To experience that is within. I have gone to prisons. In fact, I have, oh dear, been to various different prisons to support and to help, to stand with, to listen to. And I have seen strong men broken by life. Strong men who have then submitted themselves to the things of God and I have seen those men be more free on the inside than what many people are on the outside. There is a freedom and a liberty within when Jesus Christ is the center. This is all about saving people's lives. You see, love, number one, requires vulnerability. There you go. Got to be vulnerable. And there are people today that are so hurt, so damaged. Can I tell you, hurt people hurt other people. They don't mean to. They just go ahead, right ahead and do it. Okay, they don't want to, they do it. Love requires vulnerability. Lord, make me vulnerable. Lord, and, and he said, don't worry, I, I'm with you. I am with you. But what if they hurt me? I am with you. I love you. Unless you can stay vulnerable. You know, the same sun that melts the wax hardens the clay. And some situations are where the, the heat of life have caused people to become brittle and you can't touch them, you can't get into them, you can't talk with them, right? They, the knee-jerk reaction to almost everything they around about them. That person, and if that's you, I'm suggesting to you right now that you say, forgive me, Lord, I repent of that. Repent means to turn around. It's not a judgmental word, it's a good word. It means I don't want to walk in that direction anymore. I want to walk in this direction toward you Help me and heal me, O oh Lord. Number two, it draws us into right relationship with God. Right? This is what love does. It draws us into when we ask him. He said, ask of me and I will answer you. If you draw nigh to me, I'll draw nigh to you. Right? You don't have to run a marathon to get God. You just simply need to say, Lord, I surrender. Love draws us into right relationship with God. Number three, it places pride on the altar of humility. 
Now, don't get hung up with this word pride. Don't get hung up with it. I'm talking about the right. Now, if you believe you have the right to do, to take your own life, if you have the right to throw in your family, I will say this to you now, regardless, and I've already summed it up in the beginning, how much I understand. I've already summed it up in the beginning of where people get to. They get to a place where it doesn't matter anymore. They've got nothing left in them. The battery is out. <laughs> and sometimes the last thing they have left is pride. The pride to choose to give up. Whereas God's love, if a person has God's love at the center, they won't do it. They won't do it. Now, I'm not being judgmental because sometimes I think back and it grieves me to think of, it grieves me. It grieves me to have to give this word because I know some people will reflect and say a family member did that, a friend did that, and they didn't have pride. Yeah, well, I want to save people's lives from this moment forward. And I hope and pray that this message will do just that. You see, pure love, pure love, God's love, when he is at the center, that person realizes that less of themselves and more of him, regardless of the circumstances. You see, it says here, for God so loved the world. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish, should not perish, should not perish. Have you got it? Should not perish, but have everlasting life. These are not just words. This is the message from God himself. He said, put me first. I want to be at the center. You think you've lost everything. This is why the message of Job in the Bible is so valuable to all of us. To have, Job had a wife and his wife said, curse God and die. Oh my goodness. That man had nothing left. And yet he would not curse God. God rewarded him. And it's a great message for every one of us. May have everlasting life for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. But the world through him might be saved. Lord Jesus, be at the center. Listen, you're hearing me right now. If you believe you are at the end of your rope, get on your knees, humble yourself, repent and say, God, be at the center of my life. And I lay hold of you now. And I can tell you, the Holy Spirit will touch you. The Holy Spirit will quicken you. That type of surrender is the type of surrender that puts God first. You see, Proverbs says this, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Don't lean on that own understanding. You think you've got nothing left but God. Okay? But God. You're going through a problem in your family, in your home, in your job, in your finances, no matter what. But God. I want you to say this with me right now. But God. Come on, say it. But God. Send this message out to as many people as you know. But God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways. Not in some of your ways. Not in just a few of them. But in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. And he shall direct your path. And he, that is Jesus, he will direct your path. He said, I am with you always. My favorite verse in the Bible is John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not that the world gives do I, do I give to you. I would not have told you if it were not so. Jesus said, receive my peace. Let the Holy Spirit breathe upon you. You see, the consequences of pride. Uh, we stop listening. Uh, now, I, I keep hearkening back to some thoughts I have on this whole message. Pride is the only word I've got here. I wish I could explain it another way. But the pride of life, the pride of self, the pride of thinking we have the right, hurt people hurt and they stop listening to other people. Okay, they just stop listening. 
Number two, we arrive at our end. How could anybody arrive at their end if Jesus is truly at the center of their life? Number three, we drive people away. Now, I want to tell you, I make that comment and I just had a flashback in my own mind where I too had come to my end a few times, a couple of times in my life. Okay, And I've thought some pretty irrational thoughts. So I'm being transparent with you right now. And I too got on my knees. I remember I was on a trip, I was traveling, and I got on my knees beside the bed and I put my hands together like I did when I was a little boy. And I said, I repent, Lord Jesus, I repent of thinking that I had the right. I humble myself now. I place you at the center and at the head of my life. Number three, we drive people away. Number four, we lose the very thing we are trying to hold on to. Uh, number, five, it re- number five, it reveals our base nature and corrupts character. Let me go through them quickly. Number one, we stop listening. Number two, we arrive at our end. Number three, we drive people away. Number four, we lose the very thing we are trying to hold on to. And number five, it reveals our base nature and corrupts character. You see, a person that feels entitled, when they lose their entitlement, their base nature will always rise. This is about saving people's lives for good. Now I'm coming to the end of the message. I'm going to ask you to pray, to pray, to pray, because it could happen to you, it could happen to the person that says it can't happen to them, is deceiving themselves. Why do I call it saving lives for good? Well, because I believe God is good. And I believe what he has for our lives is good. Whether you're on the top of the mountain or in the lowest valley, we have a good God. And you know, if he is at the center, if he is the foundation of our lives, then he will fill our heart and our mind with good. You know what? It's okay to go back to those foundations and rebuild them again. Rebuild that which you believe into your life again. And to say, Lord Jesus, be the center. Be all within me. He said, draw nigh to me and I will draw nigh to you. So number one, stop thinking how life should be and start seeing God at the center. Remember, this is about saving people's lives for good. Number two, stop feeling entitled and start feeling and being grateful. I understand life. I understand what it is. You've already heard what I've had to say about myself and circumstances and others. However, stop feeling entitled and start being grateful. Number three, place your pride on the altar and repent. Put it on the altar and repent. Say to God, repent's not a bad word. It's a good word. It's a word that says, I'm going this direction. That's not helping. As one said, what's this doing for you? What's that doing for you? It's not doing too much. Turn it around. Do what you've got to do. Get on your knees. Dear Lord, I love you. I repent of all of that. Fill my life with your life. Number four, ask God's love. God is love when you ask him. Remember, you don't need to chase him. He's already been chasing you. Number five, intentionally decide to trust God. Now, you intentionally woke up this morning, you intentionally set the alarm, you intentionally did what you had to do. Uh, in t- doing things intentionally is not by random acts. It's by intentionally saying, Lord, I trust you. Number six, receive his love and peace within you. Now, these things are intentionally, to re- to, are intentional. To receive is intentional. You're given a gift. Do you stand there and just look at it or do you put your hand out and receive it? It's an act of obedience. Folks, I want to say God bless you. Pass this message on to as many people as you can. Let's save people's lives for good. Let's humble ourselves under the hand of a living God that loved us enough. He doesn't want to slap people. You know, it it offends me when people say uh, that fear will stop the hand of God. That's just not true. Every example of people 
around Jesus that were afraid. Jesus did the miracle. Jesus loved on them. Jesus cared for them. God will put his arms around you. Don't, don't, don't be focused on what fear does. Be focused on what Jesus will do. Okay? Okay? Surrender to him now. Uh, I, I, I sincerely believe that we can be more free on the, we could be trapped on the outside and completely free on the inside. Now, God bless you abundantly. Re-listen to this recording. Re-listen to it. Send it out. Pray now. Ask the Holy Spirit to fill you with his love. In the wonderful name of Jesus, God bless.